Okay, to begin with, um, uh, this is a new video. We'll be talking about the um, the uh, the flange mounted chuck, which you can see. Let me let me, let me zoom out anymore or not. You can see sitting up on the lathe with the back mounted to the back plate. That's the flange mounted chuck. That's the one that I'm really anxious to get working. But as a quick follow up on the um, last video, or the quick follow up on the last two videos actually, if you refer back to the the first video that we made, um, you'll you'll realize that the run out on this chuck was in excess of two and a half thousandths. So after after grinding and a little a little additional work beyond beyond the last video, um, the result was right around two tenths. Um, and I'm not sure the test bar is completely accurate. I will tell you that these collets are specced at three tenths. So whether that's true or not, they're Chinese collets. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. But hopefully, hopefully we're good. And I, I'm going to quit on this particular chuck and start on the next one. So um, I just wanted to run a little video clip and I'll, and I'll start the lathe. And um, I'll zoom in on the clock or the DTI, whichever you want to call it. And it's a very, the, the DTI, is, the tense indicators are very sensitive, you know. Not sure I can zoom in that much. It's just about two tenths pretty hard to tell looks like there's some little deviation in the in the, um, the test bar that I've got in there it's a it's pretty good piece of uh, a chunk of metal it's a, it was cut off of the the shank of a long end mill so that's that's where it came from and uh, it's, it is it is it is sort of polished and you know nice nice piece so I'm sure that the two tenths or two and a half tenths um, are the result and you, you can see that's a you know I can't zoom in anymore but that's a tenth indicator so um, I'm quite happy with that I think it's I think it's gonna be just fine so we're gonna get the other chuck mounted up on there and and do some grinding and and see how that works out so I'll probably divide the video into uh, uh, I'll be turning the camera off and on because um, the grinding process might might take a little while. I don't know, but usually this goes pretty quick. Um, so we're using a, initially we're, we'll be using a 60 grit uh, grinding stone. Um, and if you look at the last video, the setup is explained there. And there's a lot of explanation in the past two videos, so you might take a look at those if if you have any curiosity. Okay, you know, I'm going to um, I'm going to call off now with this little segment, and we're going to get set up, and uh, we'll we'll bring you back when uh, we get the chuck mounted on the lathe. Okay, we're back. Um, I took out the the uh, the call with the MT3 shank, and I've uh, bolted up the back plate and uh, this flange mounted uh, collar chuck. Uh, to the lathe so we're ready to start grinding um, I will say that this this has been on the lathe before and I did some grinding on it initially um, so just to see because it was it was out at least between four and five thousandths of an inch so it was out a huge amount and so I did a little bit of grinding on it initially and I think it's down to about one and a half thousandths now so I'm going to take another I don't know uh, one or two thousandths out of the bore to try to get this thing try to get the run out to something acceptable um, so let me start the lathe and I'll zoom you in on the clock and and you can see what it is but if I remember right hopefully 
Let us see if I have that. I guess the indicator is clear. It's awful close to the, the chuck nut, so huh, I. So I, I think I sort of zeroed the indicator, so you can you can get an idea. This is going to be a very short segment, and then we'll start grinding. I'm going to turn the light off here. Might help a little bit. I could probably turn all the lights off, would help a lot. So, something. I need to turn this light off. Well, that helps a lot. There was quite a bit of glare just from that. So there you go. That's about. Um, I guess you. I guess you could say that's maybe. Um, you know, one one and four tenths or something. It's hard. To, it's hard to tell. This is a pretty touchy, touchy little indicator. So anyway, that gives you the idea. What's going on there? Well, that's what we're starting with, or from your standpoint, from mine. I started with something much worse than that, and um, we're going to stick with this tenth indicator for all our for all our uh, tests beyond this. Um, we initially started off with a with a five tenth uh, indicator. Um, I got them mixed up at one time. That wasn't a good thing either. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to. We're going to go ahead and start grinding, and um, I may uh, I may go with this grinding this grindstone for a while. I've got another one that I've that I've trued up. So, by the way, these grindstones um, I bought from McMaster. Uh, just to, as a note here, I'm not advertising McMaster, but McMaster Car. Um, sells five of these uh, little grindstones for like six dollars okay uh, if you if you buy one Dremel uh, grindstone it costs about six dollars so and these are actually pretty good I I actually put them in the little tag micro lathe over here to trim them up because I don't have a way to to keep my setup exactly and and uh, get them trued up here so <clears throat> but they're actually pretty true just a just a few thousands to, to come off of them and they're they're trued up so um, they're um, I got I got one on on standby here let's see if I can put it in front of the camera well there's one on standby and I've got it trued up and ready to go and um, actually actually it it doesn't take much um, these 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 stones uh, hold up really well um, so they, there's, they don't get worn down very fast or clogged up, so they, they, they work very well. So anyway, just a little tidbit of trivia there. So okay, I'm going um, I'm going to uh, turn the camera off now and we'll, we'll stop this segment and I'll bring you back in, in a few minutes uh, after we make a few passes with the, uh, with the grindstone. Maybe I'll get a, in between here, maybe I'll get a shot up the bore during the grinding process you can see some sparking and so forth and so on anyway okay I'll, I'm gonna shut the camera off and I'll bring you back uh, real soon okay I decided just to make another little clip so we're going it's going along pretty good um, no complaints so, thus far um, I'm gonna take another half a thousandth out of here just to just to make sure we're we're good. So we're taking two tenths at a pass. So I'll I'll make one pass here, and we're we're going along we're going along fairly speedily right now because. So I'll I'll take I'll make a slower pass eventually. Let me turn the lights off. That that helps. I'm sure. Yeah, maybe 
maybe we need the overhead. I kind of need to see to it. I will say, just a, just a remark here, um, one thing I'm not keen on, although this, this little pencil, flex, Dremel flex shaft, whatever you want to call it, does the job very nicely. But one thing about I noticed about these little flex shafts is that the bearings in them, I don't know how they're set up, whether they're, they seem to have some play in them. So, I don't like that. But it's, it's just a, like a backlash problem in reality, so it doesn't really affect what I'm doing, but it's not something I'm real keen on. Something, maybe there's, maybe they, if you take the, the thing apart, maybe the bearings aren't rigidly mounted, I don't know. Okay, there's, there's the end of that, that run. I'm using the tenth indicator on the back of the carriage to um, to gauge my depth of cut. Works fairly well. I had some apprehensions about that, but initially, but after I tried it, I realized it works really well. So I'm going to make one more rough path here. This uh, 60 grit stone, I will say, leaves a very nice finish in the bore. It's actually acceptable. However, I do have some some other um, um, stones that I purchased from McMaster. So I'll, I'll I'll show you one of those, you know, eventually here. It's 120 grit. So that, that gives you a little finer finish if you if you so desire. But in reality, the 60 grit stone is, to, is totally acceptable as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear it when you get to the end. There it is. That's the end. Parking there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Okay, I'm going to end this little segment here and I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm back. It's been quite a while. Um, I've been fooling around with this bore forever. Um, I finally got the run out down to about three, maybe three or a little over three tenths. Um, I don't know. I, I can't get it any better. Um, and the more I fool with it, it seems to go up and down. So I, this is the best I can do. Um, uh, this bore is, I don't know what it is. It's, it seems to be more difficult or give, uh, giving me more problems than the, the other one. Now this bore, um, if you want to spend the time, uh, there is some, some deviation in the two registers so if you want you know you could get this right on with it only running out maybe three tenths or four tenths whatever it is there um, you could you could easily get it on uh, by tapping 
by tapping the backing plate around or uh, on the register. So there is there is a few tenths in each one of the registers uh, play. So you can you could get it right on if you wanted to. So, but I haven't taken any of that loose. So technically, the grinding should make it perfectly concentric. Now, it could be also that you know clamping down on the the um, the test piece is 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 varies a little bit, right? Uh, so that could be could be in the collet. And remembering the collet only has a speck of three thousands, if if in fact that's even true. The only thing I'm going by is the fact that we got the last chuck down to what was it, one and a half tenths or a couple tenths anyway. So anyway, we're 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 around. This this varies a little bit, you know, too. It's just the indicator too. So there's a whole lot of things involved. Um, okay, I'm sorry. The last video I got, the last segment I got chopped off. Uh, I guess the battery went dead. I've made a hundred videos and never had that problem. So I, I don't know what happened. I keep it plugged in all the time, but I guess the battery has to be up too. I guess the camera takes more juice than just plugging it in. They need the battery too to, to keep it going. Anyway, I didn't know that, so I learned something new. Okay, so I, I wanted to just add one more little tidbit here is the reason that um, and I got cut off so I, I'm not sure how much how much I lost I don't think very much so we'll just um, we'll just combine this with the, the rest of the video uh, segments so I'm gonna shut the the uh, lathe off and so I'm kind of done talking about that actually what I wanted to talk about was this um, was this uh, let's see let me let me move the camera just a little bit pan out What I wanted to talk about was the other chuck. Um, so the other chuck, uh, you can see that you can see it. It's just standing on its head, and um, the draw bar is in here, and the nut. And I've got a little piece. It's just a scrap of of metal that was drilled for the dry, draw bar, and it and it fits into the back of the spindle. So anyway, that's. But what I wanted to tell you was that. Also, this chuck had another problem, and um, so when I first when I first uh, put it into the bore, into the MT3 bore, and tried to put a uh, draw bar in there, the hole in the end of the MT3 um, a portion of the chuck was was drilled at some kind of a strange angle. So when you thread it in the draw bar, it was so cockeyed that it wouldn't come out the end of the spindle. So I actually had to fix that. What I did was, and let me, let me, I don't know if I can just zoom in on it right there. Maybe I can. So it's, it's actually, it's supposed to have an M12 draw bar, but I have a much smaller draw bar. So what I did was, is I put it on the mill, I drilled out the, um, I drilled out the threads of the M12, um, the M12 threads. And um, I made a sleeve with a with a small a smaller thread in there, a smaller diameter thread, and I pressed it in there. So that fixed that problem. It's straight as an arrow right now. It, it works perfectly. You don't need a big, huge M12 draw bar. So in reality, you just need to the M, the MT3 taper holds things pretty well. You just need to nip it up just a little bit, and you're good to go. So that was just another problem. So, uh, if you buy one of these chucks, be aware, this is a bang good chuck. <laughs> so anyway, I'll call off now and um, and get this video posted. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful to someone, and and um, uh, I've conveyed a little bit of information uh, concerning my uh, my task here. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.